Okay, good evening, everybody. And uh, welcome to the last official class uh, session for the semester. Okay, for today's session, we are going to uh, uh, conclude our discussion on structural determination, uh, in which we are using uh, mass spectrometry. Uh, infrared spectroscopy and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, uh, specifically proton NMR and carbon 13 NMR. So, for today's session, what I want us to do uh, is to go through working a lot of problems uh, that will be in preparation for your uh, for exam number four, uh, which is due, uh, which is scheduled for Thursday. And that is December 5, uh, which is a couple of days from now. And of course, that is the last official uh, day of class for this semester. Okay, but before we do that, also uh, I do want to let you know that there will be an online review session on Sunday, December 8th at uh, 8 p.m. So I will send you a reminder and also the link to that session. But just in the event that you did not get my uh, my link, uh, you should go ahead and use the same link that we have been using uh, over the uh, course of the semester. And also, if there is a graduating senior here, uh, you should let me know at the end of class today uh, because your exam has to be scheduled for tomorrow. And if you are also a graduating senior, you also have to take the uh, exam number four on uh, on Thursday. Okay, so let us get this uh, session started. Okay, Lori, can you go ahead and read this for us? Okay, thank you. Okay, so what we have here, uh, we have uh, a proton NMR spectrum uh, in which we are supposed to determine the structure of this unknown material. Uh, the molecular weight of the compound is C15A24 with oxygen. C15H24 and then oxygen. And they've also told us that this molecule has an IR absorption at 3400 uh, wave number. Okay. <coughs> and of course, they've also given us uh, the the number of hydrogens that are responsible for each one of these signals here. Now, if you take a look at the proton NMR spectrum, how many different types of, uh, how many uh, different sets of equivalent protons do we have in this molecule? How many different sets of equivalent protons do we have in this molecule? How many? Four, okay. Okay, four because you have four signals. One, this is one, two, three, and four. So you have definitely four sets of equivalent protons in this molecule. So you have to keep that in mind. Now, since they've also told us that this molecule has an infrared absorption at 3400 what, uh, wave number, what does that tell you? 
3,400. 3,400. Aqua, exactly. So that tells you we have an OH group. Okay, so that tells you we have an OH group. Now, so let us start working on this problem. <coughs> For most of this problem, when you are giving the molecular formula, of course the molecular formula comes from uh, your mass petrol uh, metric. Here, so let us calculate the index of hydrogen deficiency here. IHD, of course, we know the formula for index of hydrogen deficiency is uh, number of carbon atom in the molecule minus number of hydrogen divided by two minus number of halogen divided by two plus number of nitrogen divided by two plus one. Okay, I give this formula since this is a review for all of you. Okay, now let us determine the index of hydrogen deficiency. Here, how many carbon do we have? Uh, 15. Okay, we have uh, 24 hydrogen, so that would be minus 12. And since we have no halogen here, we don't need to worry about this uh, <coughs> Uh, this uh, this part of the equation here, and also we do not have nitrogen, so we do not have to worry about this also. So that becomes plus one. And if you uh, do your calculation, you will find out this is four. Okay. So this has an index of hydrogen deficiency of four. So all kind of possibilities here. Uh, several double bonds, triple bonds, rings, and stuff. But one advice I will give you right away, when, whenever you have an index of hydrogen deficiency of four, and you are deal, at least at your level, you, de, you are dealing with uh, proton NMR uh, spectroscopy, think of benzene first, okay? The first thing that you come to your mind, maybe this molecule contains a benzene uh, fragment, okay? Think of that first. Because this benzene fragment, this benzene molecule here, the index of hydrogen deficiency is four. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to think of. I mean, if it doesn't work, then you go back and uh, reframe your uh, your assumption. Okay, let us see what we can do here. We have <coughs> this signal here, singlet. This is a singlet. This is a singlet. This is also a singlet. So the first thing I want you to do write out this uh, data uh, in a tabular format. <coughs> okay, write out the data in a tabular format. Let's, so let us do that. We have a peak at uh, 1.3, right, right here. 1.3 parts per million which is a singlet, 18 hydrogens. They've already told us we have 18 hydrogen. Okay, fortunately you do not have to measure the integration line. This is your integration line here, we've done that for you. So you don't need to measure, do any measurement on that. Okay. So we told you it has 18 hydrogen. Then we have a peak at 2.2, also a singlet. And we say that has three hydrogen. And then we have a peak at 5.0. That is also a singlet. And we say that is one hydrogen. Yes. How do we know that it's a singlet again? Because it's only one peak right here. See that peak? It's only one, a single peak. 
Okay, now, <clears throat> then finally we have a peak at 7.0. That is also a singlet. And that's a two hydrogen, okay? So whenever you have this kind of problem, you take a look at the more obvious information. Okay, you've already make, made an assumption that you probably may have a benzene fragment, right? And then you look at this part of the spectrum, this 7.0, what do you think that belongs to? Benzene. benzene. Hydrogen attached to benzene, right? Okay, so you also say that that is hydrogen belong, I mean, that is attached to benzene. Now they told you that you only have two hydrogen on benzene. Okay, you only have two hydrogen on benzene. So what is that telling you? Okay, so let us start. Yes. I thought the chemical should tell you which hydrogen connects to oxygen, but um, the seven being the highest, I thought that means that one connects to oxygen. No, 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 no. It doesn't necessarily mean it's connected to oxygen. Look at the chart that I gave you. Look at the one that connected to oxygen. They are not in that region. That region belongs to the uh, benzene region. <coughs> okay. So let us look at this. So we start. Make an assumption that we have benzene because of this uh, 7.0 right here. If we say we have, yes. To say what? According to the chart that you have in your hand. That region belongs to benzene region. Huh? You see the you see the chart that I, that I gave you between 6.8 and 8.5. That's the region where you have hydrogen that is attached to benzene. Yes. No, I just wanted to start with something that is so so obvious. Start with the most obvious information. Okay. Now, we, we already started by saying that we have index of hydrogen deficiency of 4, right? Okay, so you're assuming that maybe this is benzene, and then you look at the spectrum here, you see a peak at 7.0, say, oh, that is a confirmation that this could be benzene. And then we then go further to say those, the signal at 7.0 only has two hydrogens. Then the next thing you tell yourself, if it has only two hydrogens, that means that benzene must have for substituent attached to it without hydrogen. Okay, you see the logic here. Okay, so therefore. And which also means that these two hydrogen must be equivalent. Okay, all of those things you have to bring to bear. Okay, so if that is the case, you say, is it possible that we could have a, a group here, right? We could have a group here. We could have a group here. We could have something here. And then the hydrogen could be here because this molecule must only have two hydrogen attached to benzene according, according to this data here. You follow that? Okay? If that is the case, what do we have? We also know that we have, according to the, the peak at 30, uh, the infrared absorption at 35, at uh, 3400 wave number, that it has an OH group. So we say maybe we could have an OH group somewhere here. That could be here, right? Okay, if you say OH group could be there. Now, <coughs> we also say here we have a peak at 2.3, three equivalent hydrogen. Okay, those three equivalent hydrogen, what could they be? What could they be? Three, three equivalent hydrogen. A metal. That would be a metal group. Okay. So you have, we say we have a metal group here. Okay. So right now, what are we? We have accounted for two hydrogen on benzene, which is this here and this here. We've accounted for one hydrogen here, this peak right here, because only one hydrogen. 
you take this out of the way. So we accounted for this here, only one hydrogen. If you look at the chart in your hand, the O8, the hydrogen attached to oxygen of alcohol is a wide range. Okay? And then we say this CA3 here, uh, this three hydrogen here could be a methyl group. And this methyl group will be consistent with a methyl group that is attached to benzene. Generally, you find them at about 2.2 or 2.5, if you look at the chart that I gave you. Now, the next thing, the next, uh, the next logical assumption that you now have to make is, how do we have 18 equivalent hydrogen? That's the only thing we have not accounted for. How do we have 18 equivalent hydrogen? Anybody have an idea? They must be equivalent, yes. Huh? What kind of alkane chain? They must be, all of the hydrogen must be equivalent. What? What kind of alkyl group? They must be equivalent. What is it? Two exactly two tertiary bottles. Two tertiary bottles. Okay. In other words, you have here. Okay. And that is how you yes. How will you know? Okay, don't forget this. You know, we are making some assumptions to start with. We started with index of hydrogen deficiency of four. I say, okay, when you have index of hydrogen deficiency of four, think of benzene. Okay, that is one one clue. Then you come to the NMR, the proton NMR spectrum. You see a peak at 7.0. That is the region where you expect hydrogen attached to benzene to be. Okay, so it must be something attached to benzene. Okay. You have to make those two connections. Okay, once you do that, then you say, okay, that benzene only has two hydrogen attached to it. Because it's only telling you we have two hydrogen here. Okay? So therefore, what you then have to say is, that means you have other substituents attached to benzene that are not hydrogen. Okay? And then, of course, the formula you have is C15H24. Okay, you have this formula here, C15824. You must also use that formula. Now, if you look at everything we have here, they must fit into this formula here. So you really do have to make a, a, a series of uh, logical uh, assumptions. Okay, okay, but based on uh, uh, the fact that you do understand your uh, your proton uh, magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Okay, anyway, so this is the structure of uh, this compound here. Okay, what you have here. Take this out. This peak here, uh, this is the peak at uh, 2.2. At the peak at 2.2 parts per million, which is a singlet. It is a singlet because it is not seeing any hydrogen here. This metal are not seeing uh, these hydrogens here. Do not see any other hydrogen here. Okay. And then you see this here, the peak at uh, 5.0. That is this one here. The hydrogen attached to oxygen. This is also a singlet. And then these three metal groups and these metal groups are equivalent. Okay? And you find them at 1.3 parts per million and they are all singlet. Okay. That's the 1.3 parts per million. Okay, and they are a total of 18 hydrogens. Okay? Okay, you follow that? Yes. Yes. 
I do what? No, What benzene? We are looking at hydrogen. We're looking at the proton. Oh, oh the, yeah, the, this proton here, yes. That is 7.2. This 7. Point, I'm sorry, 7.0. Okay. Because this hydrogen and this hydrogen are equivalent. That is 7.0 pass per meter. Okay. Yes. Yeah, don't forget what you see. Uh, the question says here, provide provide structure and identify which part of the molecule is responsible for the NMR signals. In other words, don't just give the structure. You've got to identify uh, which of the signals belong to which. Part of the could you just recognize that, like, like, could you just put a bracket around one of the turtles and say that that's the 1.3? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can just yeah, yeah, yeah. go down. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, uh, John Wiener, can you read it for us? Okay, thank you. Okay, so for here, uh, we want to, to propose structures for the following molecules. You have the first one. The formula is C5, H10, and one oxygen. If you look at this formula here, you know that it has one index of hydrogen deficiency, IHD, equals to one, okay, so that would be a ring or a double bond, right? Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. And then we tell you it only has one P NMR, or uh, three P NMR signals. In other words, you have three sets of equivalent protons in this molecule. Three sets of equivalent protons in this molecule. So how are you going to approach this? You only have five carbons, one oxygen, and either a double bond or a ring. Anybody has an idea? Yes? Yes. An aldehyde attached to a terpeno. An aldehyde attached to a terpeno. An aldehyde attached to a terpeno. But okay, let's see. What kind of aldehyde? So like this is aldehyde here. And then we attach that to a C. Mm -hmm. And then a three methyl group chocolate. Okay, let's see. Would that work? How many carbon do you have here? Five? How many how many different set of uh, protons uh, do you have do you, uh, equivalent protons do you have in this molecule? Two. So that will not work. We need three. Yes. A ketone, okay, let us see. A ketone. It's a methyl ketone, right? Okay. See, carbon. Oh, okay, with isopropyl. Okay. I think that will work. If you look at this molecule here, how many diff how many sets of different uh, protons do you have in this molecule? Three. Okay. If you look at this, this is one set right here. Uh, this here will be two, and this methyl group will be equivalent, so that would be three. Okay. So therefore, this molecule will give you three uh, proton NMR signals, so that would be correct. Now, supposing I ask you, if you take a look at this molecule here, 
if I give you this molecule here and I say give me the proton NMR data for this molecule, what will it look like? Proton NMR data for this molecule, yes. Let's do that. Okay, let's start with this. Look at your chart. Generally, a methyl group attached to a carbonyl somewhere between 2 to uh, 1.8 to 2.5. So anything within that range, you could give me. Okay, what do you want to give me? 2.2? Okay, that will work. 2.2, and what will be the multiplicity? Multiplicity, singlet, exactly. So this would be a singlet. Okay, we still need hydrogen, right? Okay. Okay, How about this one here. What would be the uh, chemical shift? You know, chemical shift first? You know, keeping my imagining for the complete data. About 2.5, right? 2.3? Okay. <laughs> okay, 2.3, that, that will work. 2.3, uh, multiplicity? Septet, very good. Because this hydrogen here will be seen six other hydrogens here, okay? And then, and then that will be one hydrogen. Okay, about this this metal, what would be the chemical shift? No, not that, not that far. About one point, yeah, about one point, one point three or something like that. Okay, good. Okay, multiplicity. Double, very good. And that would be six hydrogen. Okay, so I could ask you this question by simply giving you this data here and ask you to give me the structure. Right? Can I do that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we finish that one. Now, supposing I ask you if you are doing a carbon 13 NMR. How many different sets of equivalent carbon do we have in this molecule? How many? We, we're dealing with carbon-13. How many different types of equivalent carbon do we have in this molecule? How many? Okay, let's see, let's see. This will be one, right? This is two, this is three, and these two metal here, the carbon will be four. So you have four different sets of carbon in this, uh, four different uh, sets of equivalent carbon in this, uh, in this molecule. Okay, let's go to B. Okay, B says you have a formula C12H18 with only one PNMR signal. I think everybody should be able to get that. What is the index of hydrogen deficiency? Four. Four. Okay, the IAD is four. Okay. Now, what did I tell you before? Think benzene, right? I mean, it may not be correct, but if it isn't, then go back and. <laughs> <laughs> change your assumption, right? Okay, so at this point, let us assume we have a benzene fragment here. Okay. Let us start with that. Okay. Now, it tells us we only have one signal, one proton NMR signal. What does that tell you? All of those hydrogens must be equivalent. How do you get 18 hydrogen that are equivalent? 
<laughs> Make you around, exactly. Now you got the uh, you got the idea. So therefore, you must have met your So here you guys are playing detective. That's what this is. Okay? And that will be this molecule here, compound B. Okay, you'll follow that because all of these uh, protons here will be equivalent. Now, supposing I ask you to give me the proton NMR data for this, what will it look like? Look at your chart. What is it? pH is our benzene. pH is benzene. No, okay, general, generally, uh, metal groups attached to benzene is close to two. Okay? 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 Okay, so it's close, it's close to two. Okay, so, yes. Huh? Well, as long as it's not that off, you know. <laughs> I mean, instead of 2.5, you gave me 2.3. That's fine, you know. It's okay. So anyway, the chemical idea, the data for this will be the chemical she will be maybe about 2.2, the singlet, and will be 18 hydrogen. Supposing I give you that data, and I say give me the structure, you should be able to do that, right? Okay. Okay, so that's B. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, now, supposing I ask you, supposing I ask you, taking a look at this molecule here, with regard to carbon-13 NMR, how many signals do you expect to see in carbon-13 NMR for this molecule? How many? Two, two exactly. <laughs> two. two signals, because you only have two sets of equivalent hydrogen. The methyl carbons are equivalent, and also the carbon on the ring system are equivalent. Okay? okay for carbon 13, it will be only two. Not, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You know that uh, carbon 13 is the isotope of uh, carbon. That is the one that actually we use in a uh, uh, in a nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Huh? Say that again. Two different types of carbon. Yes. Two different types of carbon. Right. Let's for carbon 13. Okay, so the, the metal group will be one type of carbon. All of this here. So that's one type of carbon. And then the, uh, the carbon on the ring system, this here, will be the uh, other type of carbon, too. Okay, so let us do three. Uh, three, the formula is C3H6 and oxygen. What is the index of hydrogen deficiency? One. one. So it could be a ring or a double bond, right? Yeah. Or what would that be? And only one signal. Only one signal. Ketone. Ketone. Well, okay, give me the structure. Okay. Oh, exactly. So that should be very easy. Okay, and what will be the chemical sheet data for this look like? There are the methyl attached to carbonyl is somewhere between 1.8 to 2.5. So anything in that range. <laughs> okay, let's say 2.3.
2.3 parts per million uh, multiplicity singlet and number of hydrogen six okay that, that would be the uh, proton NMR data mm -hmm. okay let us do the last one on this Number uh, uh, D, let's do the D. D, we have C5. C5, H10, and two oxygen atoms. Okay, the index of hydrogen deficiency for this is what? One? Okay, IHD equals to one. So that could be a ring or a double bond, right? Okay, now you now have to put the pieces together. Only have two PNMR data signals. Only two types of, two sets of equivalent hydrogens. So you've got to find a way to make all of these uh, 10 hydrogens here to make sure that you only have two sets that are, you know, just equivalent hydrogen, yes. Huh? Carbon? Carbon attached to. No. Oh, oh, you have okay, okay, yeah, that's what you want to do. Carbon slick acid. Okay, let us see. Okay, so that one, that is one set of hydrogen on carbon slick acid. Okay, now you have how many more hydrogen do you have left? Nine. Okay. Special butyl. Okay, you guys are getting the idea. Okay, everybody got that? Okay, what will be the uh, uh, proton NMR data look like? For this molecule here, what would the proton NMR data look like? Carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid is the hydrogen attached to oxygen of a carboxylic acid. You will find that somewhere between 10.5 to 12. Okay, so anything within that range will be fine. Okay, okay. So therefore, uh, then this this methyl group. Okay, this methyl group uh, they are not attached to electron withdrawing group, so they might be about 1.3. So we say. For the metal group right here, 1.3 parts per million multiplicity. Yeah, that's it. A multiplicity. What is it? Singlet. Yes. Okay. How many hydrogen? Nine. Okay. About this one here. Chemical shift. 11.3, okay, very good. That will also be a singlet, one hydrogen. Okay? Similarly, I could give you this data here and ask you to give me the, the structure. Indeed, we are going to be doing some of that before we leave today, yes. Which one? Oh, the past per million? PPM? Oh, no, you don't have to. Yeah. No, you just give the number as long as you give me the eleven point three, one point three. The past, huh? Well, you know, you could give it if you want to. That's just the unit, that unit of measurement. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yes, if I ask for the structure, I will also ask you to give me the uh, the, uh, the the uh, the part of the molecule that is responsible for each one of those signals. You have to give the the, uh, the chemical shift. Yes. Okay. Okay, this will be fairly easy to ev for everybody. 
Okay, uh, Jasmine, can you go ahead and read this for us? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Okay, for here, so what are we asking you here? We are giving you a series of structures and simply asking you what, how many chemical shift signals do you expect? Another way I could ask you this question, I could also ask you how many different sets of equivalent hydrogen do you have in this molecule? I could say how many different set of equivalent protons do you have in this molecule? That would be the same question. Okay. So let us uh, take a look at A. How many different types of uh, how many different sets of signals, chemical shift signals do you expect on A? One. One. Very good. Everybody agree? Because these are all equivalent. Okay. Now, supposing we are dealing with carbon thirteen. How many? Two. two. For carbon for carbon thirteen would be two. Okay, about B. Different set of hydrogen. Okay, let us see. Three, you say three. Okay, this and this one, right? This and this here, let's call this two. This and this, three. Okay, three is correct. Okay, so that would be three. Three sets of uh, proton in this molecule here. How about this one here? C. How many? One. Okay. One set here. How about D? How many sets of uh, protons do you have in D? Three? <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two. Don't forget, this is a tetrahedral carbon, okay? Okay, so that is two. Which is this one here, and this three here, too. Okay, but here, E, how many different uh, set of... It's two, it's two. Okay, this, all these hydrogen here, they are in the same electronic environment. They have a, a equivalent, okay? Okay? Okay, so I would expect this to be, to be two. Now, I will also tell you, whenever you have, yes? Uh, for part D, if you were looking at um, carbon therapy, Oh, if you're looking at carbon-13, yes. For part D, yes. For carbon-13 here, yes. I got four for D, but for, for this here will be, uh, let's just see, one, one set, two, three, and four. The four. That would be four. Okay. For D, is it how many do you get? Okay, as I told you, you will get two uh, set of... Uh, equivalent hydrogen. I was then going to expand on that further, okay? okay? Now, if you have, let us say we have the NMR spectrum, you have a molecule that is dice in uh, a benzene ring that is dice substituted, a benzene ring that is dice substituted, of course, you expect the, the this hydrogen here, in this particular instance here,
Okay? If I draw the uh, PNMR data for this year, of course the TMS is here. This is your TMS, which is your uh, internal, uh, uh, internal standard. Okay, and then here, at about 2.2, uh, Two point two, the two point two right here, which will be a singlet. I will expect this to be around two point two, and the same thing as this year. They are, they are equivalent. Now, what is going to happen in the benzene region? You are going to get what we call doublet of doublet. If you see a splitting pattern like this in the benzene region, what that tells you is that you have a dye, a para dye substituted uh, benzene. In other words, uh, the, the, the uh, substituents are opposite to each other. This is what we call para substitution. And we generally refer to this kind of uh, splitting pattern as doublet of doublet doublet of doublet. So if you see a doublet of doublet, what well that is telling you, you have a benzene in which you have two groups attached on opposite side of the benzene uh, uh, structure. Yes. And the groups, can, the groups can be the same or different? Yes, it could be the same or different, yes. Okay. Okay, so let us go to the next one. About F, how many different types of hydrogen do we expect for F? Two. Two. One, and this here, very good. This would be one set right here, and this and this, this CA2 here and CA2 here will be the second set. Okay, so that would be two. Uh, about in terms of carbon? Three. Okay, one, two, and three. Okay, very good. Okay, let us move to the next one. Okay. Now, let us do this. Huh? Which one? 11. I want us to do this call. We'll come back to 11. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, 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 Bena? Yes, go ahead and read this call. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so in this case, okay, so now they have given us the proton NMR data. Okay, instead of giving us the structure, okay, now they've gi or giving us the spectra. What else they've given us is this uh, proton NMR data, and now we have to give the structure. Okay, so you have a molecule C4H6. Let's just do a uh, start with A. C4. H6 and two chlorine atom. Okay, if you look at the index of hydrogen deficiency for this molecule, uh, that would be IHD will be that would be one. IHD is one. Okay. okay. So we have IHD of one, which could be a double bond or a ring. And if we only have four carbon atoms here. Okay, so what will it be? Okay, what will it be? Any idea? Okay, now by the way, whenever you see this J, just ignore them. What that is simply telling you that those, this, this signal here, whatever is giving this signal and whatever is giving this, they are next to each other. That's what that is telling you. But don't even bother about that. This J, this J here. Forget the J. Okay. Just giving you additional information to help you. Okay. Uh, we have 2.183 hydrogen singlet. 
then 4.16, two hydrogen doublet, 5.71, one hydrogen triplet. Okay, well, we know that we have a methyl group because of three hydrogen, right? Okay, so let us start with that. CH3. Okay. Yes. Is Which one? The IAG? Okay. Okay, so we know we have a CA3 here. We have two more signals to give, right? Would the 5.71 account for a double bond and the double bond would be attached to our CA3? What is the Okay. Okay, very good. So now you say that we must have a double bond somewhere. Yes, the double bond and the One of the, okay. Okay. Keep in mind that there must be no hydrogen on this carbon now. So, because it's a singlet. Okay, therefore we must place chlorine here. If you do that, because you cannot place hydrogen here, right? Okay. So that will work. And then here, so how many carbons have we used so far? One, two, three. Only one more carbon to go. Right? And what else? What is this going to be? Huh? CH? No, where? Here, where? Right there. Right here? Yes. Okay, don't forget now we need to account for, okay, so far we've accounted for only this here, the metal. So we need to account for 4.16 and 5.71. Okay? Right here? Yes. Good word. It turns into an ethyl. Turn into an ethyl. Then you have a cortex. You don't have a content here. Right? Any we only have one more carbon to go, right? And this carbon <laughs> this carbon needs two bonds, right? This carbon right here needs two bonds. We have a doublet and we have a triplet. This is a doublet. We have a doublet, what does that tell you? And we have a triplet. Okay, exactly. CA two CL, very good. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, we start off by saying that we know we have either a double bond or a ring. Okay. So you just make an assumption. You only have four carbon atoms here, and then you say you have a a metal group. We also know we have a metal group right here at 2.18. So you simply just have to make an assumption that the methyl may be attached to a carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, now, let us look, do, uh, does this uh, structure, does it, uh, is it consistent with the information we have? Let us see. We have uh, methyl 2.18 singlet, so we could say that is this one here. Okay, that is 2.18 singlet. And on this here, this here, we could say this is your, uh, this would be your uh, one hydrogen here, which is a triplet. Okay, if you look at your chart, the uh, hydrogen attached to carbon carbon double bond, you generally find them in that region. Okay, okay so that would be your 5.71, well, that would be your 5.71. Okay, and it is a it is a triplet because it is a triplet because it is seen. Okay, this, if you see the carbon on the next, the hydrogen on the next carbon atom, don't forget this hydrogen is attached to this carbon. It is seen the hydrogen attached to this carbon, which is two n plus one n plus one rule. Yes. B 
draw like C H. Oh yeah, yes, yes, you could draw C H, yes. yes. Okay. And so now this is uh this is your triplet. And then this here, the C A two attached to chlorine, that would be your four point one six. And that is a doublet because they are seeing this hydrogen here, this proton here. So what you need to do when you have this kind of problems, you need to uh, you need to uh, construct a structure that is consistent with the data that you have. Yes. This hydrogen here. Because this hydrogen here is attached to this carbon, right? And the carbon attached to it, which is this here, has two other hydrogen attached to it. The M plus one rule says that the, the signal will be split into M plus one, N meaning the number of hydrogen that it sees. Okay, this one, this here is seeing two hydrogen. Two plus one is three. That's why you get the triplet answer. That is why this is a triplet right here. Okay, let us do, uh, so we've done uh, A, let us do uh, B, let us do B. Yeah. You say that should be easy, okay. Yeah, very good. Okay, let's do B. <laughs> B, okay, what does, <laughs> B should be easy, right? Okay, we have a peak at, we have two sets of hydrogen, right? The one at 7.0, five hydrogen single. What does that tell you? That means it's a one Exactly. You see how easy that is? You see how easy that is? So that means that is benzene with one substituent. <laughs> Okay, and what would be that substituent? That would be a star substituent. Tertiary butyl. Tertiary butyl. No, no, no. Just give me the complete structure. Okay. The seven point zero five hydrogen would be all of these hydrogen are chemical in the same electronic environment on benzene. That is why you have them as a singlet. And then, of course, the nine hydrogen here, these are all of these hydrogen here are equivalent. They are all also in the same electronic environment. And that is 1.30. And this hydrogen here, 7.30. Okay. Okay, so let us do, we still have plenty of time left, I think. Let's do C. Let us do C. Okay, C, we have the formula for C. C4, H7, bromine, and then oxygen. Okay, if you look at this, the index of hydrogen deficiency is one, so make sure you always work out your index of hydrogen deficiency. That will give you at least some kind of clue. Okay, that means you may have a double bond or a ring. Okay, now what do we have? 2.11, three hydrogen, singlet. That means we have a methyl group, right? Methyl group that is attached to a carbon that has no other hydrogen attached to it. Then you have, forget this J value business here. Then you have 3.52, two hydrogen triplets. 4.40, two hydrogen triplets. What does that tell you? Two, CH2s, right? Okay, let us see. Uh, okay, we have, we have oxygen there. And we have one index of hydrogen deficiency. Okay, so how do you want to approach that? 2.11 methyl group, yes. Yeah, I was going to say that it's most likely they're going to have a group of tasks, and I saw 
Okay. Carbonyl. Okay, that would be consistent with a methyl attached to carbonyl. Okay. Okay, so that would be your singlet, right? Okay. Now you have two triplets. Two triplets could be given by two CH2s that look at each other for one of the triplets, for one of the carbons. Okay. Very good. You see how easy this is. You guys are becoming experts. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Okay. Let's let's assign the uh, let's assign the peaks. Two point one one, right? That's your singlet. Here, uh, this could be, this is your 3.52 because you want to assign the one attached to carbon as the bromine, uh, the greater chemical shift. So this is 3.52 triplet. And this other one here is your 4.40 triplet. Okay? See how easy that is. Okay, so let us do a D. I'm going to call on you now. Kara. I said I'm going to call on you to solve this one here. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's do D. Let's do D. This should be very easy also. Forget the J value here. Okay, so we have a formula C9. C9, H11, and bromine. What is the IHD for this? Four. Okay. What did I tell you before? Um, <laughs> the 3.52 triplets. Where is that on the box? Like what box is that? Is that in this here? Yeah. This here? Yeah. That's the triplet. Yeah. No, no, I got that. But like looking on this chart. Okay. Okay, this here, this here two here, we'll be seeing this here two. Yeah. So it will be split into a triplet. Two plus one. Yeah. But what I'm saying is like like on this chart, you can see like the CH2 attached to the drone in the three to five point two range. So it's in there somewhere. It's a, it's a range. Okay, now, another thing I need to tell you, some of these things become very uh, cumulative. <laughs> you know, okay. Okay, for example, if you have this, if you have this here, let me show you this. <laughs> Ordinarily, if you look at this CA2 here, I would expect this to be about 2.5. But now, if you now have bromine attached to it or some electron withdrawing group attached to it, okay, ordinarily this might just be a CA2 attached to bromine by itself could be about three. But because it's also attached to this here, it will then be put to about maybe about five. So it becomes very accumulative, okay? Some of those are in terms of the electron withdrawing effect of, the, uh, of some of the groups in the molecule. Okay, so anyway, let's just do our D. Okay, D, we have uh, the formula is C9, H11, and one bromine. What is the index of hydrogen deficiency? Four. Four. And we have here if you look at this, 7.22, 5 hydrogen. What does that tell you? That's benzene. That's benzene. That's only one substituent, right? Because you have 5 hydrogen there. Okay, now. Then you have 2.15 quintet. 2.75. 
two hydrogen triplet, three point three eight two hydrogen triplet. All of them are two hydrogen each. Okay, and we have bromine in this molecule. What would it be? Three carbon, okay. CH2, 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 CH2 BR. Okay, okay. Let's assign the uh, the 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 signals. Okay, the uh, the benzene signal will be your seven point two two, and this here. <coughs> This here, which is a quintet, this would be the quintet seen four hydrogens, right? Okay, that would be your 2.15. Okay, and this one attached to bromine would be your 3.38 triplet. And the one attached to benzene would be your 2.75. Okay? Yes. For that one, how is the uh, 7.22 stimulus? Okay, all of these hydrogen here. What happens they are in the same electronic environment? Because, remember, because of resonance, all of these five electrons are simply just moving around. So, each one of these hydrogen here, they will be experiencing the same electronic environment. That is why. I thought you determined signals by the carbon that is attached to, and you use ten plus one. Which one? I thought you to find singlet or triplet. I thought you determined it by the carbon it's attached to, and that carbon. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Now, the key, the key, the the key point is whenever you have a set of hydrogen, generally the, they are in the same electronic environment, meaning that they will be having the same chemical shift. Because when you when you do the uh, NMR uh, spectroscopy, you're actually looking at different protons uh, absorbing energy at a particular uh, uh, frequency. In this case, all of this hydrogen here, what we what we are saying here, all this hydrogen here will be absorbing the, in the same uh, uh, the, have the same absorption frequency, meaning that they will have the same uh, chemical shape. So. And that is why they will be given a singlet. They will essentially look as though they are uh, equivalent. Okay? So whenever you have, particularly if you have an sp3 carbon attached to benzene, all of those hydrogen attached to benzene, if it is monosubstituted, they will all be appearing as though they are all singlet. Okay. But okay. Well, that's a good question, though. Okay, so let us go to 13. Okay, let us see here. Yes. Oh, number 12? 4.40? Shouldn't that be what? No, no, no. This data that we are giving you, this is the data from the instrument. Don't forget that what we are, what we have there, we are looking at the range. Okay, we're looking at the range. And different, because you have different molecules, not all the molecules will exactly be exactly you know, the same particular uh, value that you have on that chart. But generally, that is why we generally give you a range uh, to, look, to look at. Okay. Okay, let us do our 13. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Delano, can you go ahead and read this for us? Okay, thank you. Okay, so now we are we are giving you the uh, uh, the proton NMR spectrum. What do we have here? We already already told you this here, this signal here. 
What we've done is to expand this signal. That's what this is. Okay, that is a triplet. And this signal here, we also expanded it, and this is a quartet. And then we have this signal here, that is a singlet. So this molecule has only three sets of equivalent hydrogen or protons. Okay? There are three sets of equivalent protons. Now they've also given you the formula is C4, H7, through oxygen and chlorine. Uh, what is the index of hydrogen deficiency? Anyone? What is it? One. One? Okay. Index of hydrogen deficiency is one. IHD is one. Okay, that means we could have a double bond or a ring. Okay, now they've also told us that this signal here, this signal here, which is the triplet, uh, that is supposed to be three hydrogen responsible for those signals. And then the one at 4.0 parts per million is two hydrogen. And the one at 4.2 parts per million this year, uh, this is also two hydrogen. Okay? Yes. Yes, the one for 4.2, that's the one, that's the one that belongs to this. That was that. This one is expanded. The 4.2 is expanded. That is a quartet, okay? And the uh, 1.3 is a triplet. It's expanded, right here. Okay. okay so let's work this out. So what do you think this would be? We have we have two oxygen atoms. Okay. We have a metal. Okay. Now, you look at quartet and triplet, what does that tell you? Yes. So, uh, yeah, so you have an ethyl group right away. Yeah. So that tells you right away. You must have this. Okay? If that is the case, on this carbon here, whatever this carbon is attached to, must not have hydrogen on this side. Mm -hmm. And then you look at here, this is a, this would be your quartet and your triplet, and this would be your quartet, which is this year, at uh, 4.2. So to be 4.2, that means it must be next to what? Okay, carbonyl, that would be 2 point something. Okay? You have two oxygen here. You have two oxygen atoms here, in this one. Okay? Oxygen, okay. And then? Carbonyl, okay, and then you only have one more carbon left. Okay, keep in mind you only have three signals, right? This is one, two, okay, <coughs> you have two hydrogen, both of these are two hydrogen. And you see I have chlorine now. There's chlorine in this molecule also. The formula is C4. H7, <coughs> oxygen, and chlorine. So what will it be? We need to complete this molecule here. <coughs> okay, we know this is your, we know this is your uh, 1.2 1 or 1.3, uh, which is a triplet. And uh, we know this is your uh, 4.2, which is also, uh, which is a quartet. Okay, now we need to look for your singlet, two hydrogen. <coughs> singlet, two hydrogen. Uh, what is, oh, CA2, okay. Yeah, okay. And that would be your 4.0 right here. Singlet. And, of course, it is a singlet. So let us go to 14. What time do we have? Okay. okay, we should be able to do this also. Let's see how many people. 
Okay, Arona, can you read this for us? The proton NMR spectrum for compound A, C4H603 is given below, provides a structure for compound A with a spectral size of 10 microns and a hydrogen. The signal at 2.3 ppm has two hydrogens, at 2.6 ppm has four hydrogens. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this will be fairly simple. Uh, how many sets of hydrogen, uh, how many sets of uh, equivalent hydrogen or protons do we have in this molecule? The formula is C4, C4, H6, and three hydrogens. Okay. What is the index of hydrogen deficiency? IHD plus two. So you may have two rings or two double bonds or a double bond and a ring, whatever combination. Okay. And you only have two sets of hydrogen that are equivalent, and you only have four carbon atoms, and then you have three oxygen atoms. Okay. I will say here, let me give the number. 2.3 is a uh, two hydrogen here. This is two hydrogen. And this year, the one at 3.6, which is this year, I uh, will say this is for hydrogen. Okay? Any idea? Yes. Uh, yes. Epoxide. This is, this is epoxide. <laughs> okay, okay, let's see, let's see, okay, let's see. Ah, uh, okay, I think I have an idea what you're saying here. Okay, this, I think this is... Oh, okay, triangle, okay. <laughs> oh, not that, okay. Propane chain. Okay, this here. Okay. This one? Yes, yeah, change that to Oh, okay. I see, I see where you're going. Okay, yeah. let's see. And then form a ring out of that. And then put the O's at the end of the twos, and then four put an O at the bottom and top and then form a triangle. Okay. To here? No, to the... To this? Oh, oh, I got you. Okay, I got you. So, in other words, you want this. This is what you are saying here. put an O at the end, so you make carbon out. That's what you have now. That's what you have. <laughs> oh, I, I thought an old. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay, that's it. Okay, good. You, you, you are close, though. Okay. Okay, right? Another o, another o. Where? Oh, 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 I see. Okay. We want, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, yeah, then CH2 is another Then CH2. Yeah. One, okay. The problem is we need an index of hydrogen deficiency of two. That This formula will not work. <laughs> right? Okay, well, let's, that's, that's, I thought, I thought this was where you were going, right here. I thought you were going here. Okay, look at, look at, look at this one here. You're almost there. Look at this here, right? You're almost there. Similar to what you have here. Supposing I just did what you did here. Okay. It has four carbons, right? Okay, let us do the assignment. The uh this here and this here, this will be your three point uh three point six triplet because they are seeing this one here. Okay? And this one here, this here, 
will be your 2.2, okay, and seeing our four hydrogens, okay, because this is our one, two, three, four, five. This is a quintet. This this is a quintet, so that is why you have this here. Okay, yes. Yeah, it has four hydrogen. Yeah, that's this, that's why we say four hydrogen here. Right. Okay, let's do the last one before we go. Well, this is the last lecture, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Well, I've not called today. I'll call uh, everybody is hiding. Uh, Holly, yeah, can you come in? Can you read 15 for us? Okay, thank you. In this case, we want to do carbon 13 before we leave. This carbon 13 is actually much easier than uh, proton NMR. If you have this, okay, if you look at this here, how many different types of carbon do you have in this molecule? Three, right? One, two, and three, right? The same thing, this would be one on this side and two, so those are equivalent. Okay, so we expect to see three signals. Now with carbon-13, if you run, there are so many ways in which we actually do carbon-13 NMR, but one of them is, if you run what we call the regular uh, carbon-13 NMR, The multiplicity, this carbon here, the multiplicity depends on the number of hydrogen that is attached to it. So this carbon will be a quartet. This carbon here will be a triplet, unlike in the case of hydrogen where you're looking at the neighbor. With carbon, you're looking at what is actually attached to it. Okay? So this here will be a triplet. Okay? Which one? Yeah. So anyway, so we, uh, the multiplicity, the uh, uh, pattern for the carbon, you look at the hydrogen that is attached to, the number of hydrogen attached to that carbon. Okay? And then you apply your N plus one rule. Now, so therefore, if I have this molecule here, If I have this molecule here, how many different types of carbon do I have here? How many? Carbon. Three. This is one right here. Two, two, and three. Okay? Now, if you look at the carbon-13 uh, data sheet that you have, whenever you have a carbon-oxygen double bond, the absorption, uh, the chemical shift is about, uh, about somewhere between 170 to 200. So, in this case, it might be about 170, the parts per million. You notice that the chemical shift pattern aspect, uh, the, uh, uh, spectrum for carbon-13 is a lot broader. For a proton, it goes from 0 to 10. For carbon-13, it goes from 0 to 220. Okay. So this carbon here, this carbon-oxygen double bond, you expect it to be at 170 parts per million. Okay. Now, what would be the multiplicity? That would be 
singlet because there is no allergen attached to it for this one here for this one here okay so that would be a singlet okay if this one here not too far from carbonyl generally the, uh, if you look at your data sheet it's about 40 parts per million What would be the multiplicity? <coughs> Triplet, exactly. Because you have two allergens attached to it. This carbon here, because it is a little further away from the carbonyl, might be about, uh, about 30 parts per million. And what would be the multiplicity? Triplet, very good. Okay, so now let us solve this problem here. Let's do A. A, you have a compound molecular formula C4H10, and you only have two carbon atoms, two set of carbon atoms. What would be the structure? <laughs> okay, very good. Yes, see how easy that is. You see that? How do you know it's butane? Okay, and this is a quartet and triplet. That's simple. A but B, that is good. So the answer here is this here for this. A but B. Huh? <laughs> that one there. <yeah. laughs> I thought I, I thought I was hoping you guys would see that. Okay, so B will be this one here. The formula is C5H10, one index of hydrogen deficiency. And that would be this here. Okay, folks, we have come to the end of uh, the semester. So uh, I will see you on uh, on Thursday. Of course, by the way, this one is this is the 40 parts per million here, and this is 28 parts per million. And of course, this year is the 170 past family. Okay, so enjoy the rest of your evening, and I will see you on uh, Thursday. I, I will try to come in fairly early on Thursday for those of you who may want to see me in the office. No. No, 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 hour, no, hour. That was last year or something? Yeah, that was last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>